back is BDD. May actually have to flash here his spirit. He's booking it. He's going to be able to land the E. Gets himself the shield from the pass, but BDD is going to be okay. Holds on. Well, on the bottom lane. Gorilla in a lot of trouble. Concussive blows goes down. And that's first blood. All too easy for Kramer, who stacks up the Rage Blade. So much damage. Good dodge of the Winter's Bite coming in from Peanut and Kramer all alone, but he's just battling Prey. Hail of Arrows has to be flashed away from and Prey. Arcane Shift comes back up, but Kramer, is he going to be alive? Yes, he is. Yeah, Kuro in a great spot as well for the start of this skirmish as well at 18 minutes into the game. Cosmic Radiance comes down as the Impale is there. It's going to save Gorilla's life for the moment, but Fantastic Unbreakable just denies the ultimate. First kill does come in for Kingzone. But you've got Kramer, he's in the back line trying to do what he can, but Khan's going to just destroy him. Spirit now running for the hills. BDD picks it up in Kingzone. Just too good in a team fight. BDD is going to lock down Kuro, but probably in not the fight. To... Did not use the ultimate there, the Unleashed Power. Watch the replay. It's a really good timing on the Cosmic Radiance before the suppression actually hits. So Tarek doesn't die instantly. And from there, you'll notice that Kuro's in the back line, not able to get a full rotation of spells off. Then Spirit is easy to turn on. Keen's out of position. There's no damage from the Syndra. Fire. Have to be careful of Spirit. Oh, Engage, there it is. Speaking of which, he's going to flash into the Impale. Cosmic Radiance, is it going to come down in time? No, it's not. Gorilla is going to fall, but Kuro, he's going to suffer the same fate. Peanut grabs one. Call the Forge God, gets a decent knockup, but Prey, he's untouched. Tucson's going to go down. BDD is Prey? doing disgusting things in the front line. It's a double for the Scion, who is just a slab of meat in this battle. And that is an ace, a freak or a wiped, and that's going to be first turret. Oh, but the point stuff can't come early enough. Kakuro just chased down in the 5v5. The mid lane turret falls down to minions. The Baron goes to King Zone, and the first big snowball goes the way of King Zone Dragon X. Yeah, let's have a look at it again, though, Papa, because I don't know. Remember, just... remember this oh. low engage from King Zone. Afrika does the hard work for them. Gorilla's dead, but then BDD gets into the back line. So does the Jax. Trinity Force completed. Kuro's dead, and now it's only one threat, it's only Kramer, and the conga line of tanks one by one means that he might be kiting back, but Jack's in the back line, Sion's in the back line, they can chase in, and we're seeing the flexibility of Ezreal in that Ezreal be more respected. Now we're seeing the Baron started, Khan on interrupt duty. Yeah, he's gonna get a double knock up there, that's pretty cute, but look at all the damage. Wait for the round ball. this Baron, and the amount of healing that's available from Gorilla, in they go. Khan straight into the back line as the Glacial Fissure only gets one knockup. Khan is going to be able to go golden and survive this one, but no one from Afrika is dead just yet, just low. Baron's going to be going down pretty damn fast. They're probably looking for a turn more than anything. The Control Ward does go over the wall. Call of the Forge God should be able to get some knockups here. Nice triple, but Peanut and Prey still going to be absolutely up by Khan. They're trying to control for this area, mostly. making it hard for Afrika to react. The speed of this Elder Dragon's not going to be that fast. They start the fight. Yeah, big knockup onto Gorilla, who's just going to be taken out. No options there whatsoever as the Call of the Forge God comes in. Everyone flashing over the wall. They're collapsing onto King Zone. It's a couple already as Tucson. He's going extremely low. Prey picks him off with a really well placed Q. But they don't have much of a front line remaining. BDD, you can see, doesn't tank a lot of damage very well. But Prey actually want to go 1v1. No Impale available as Spirit. Getting to the point in the game where giving your life to contest an objective for a Smite Steal is not worth it. Afrika guessed that there was going to be at least two people on the Dragon and went for the fight. This time, Gorilla, even with a QSS unable to ultimate, no Cosmic Radiance available in the fight. But after it was all said and done, notice the fact that actually Scion, when dead, did huge damage. He did eventually die. He still has not respawned. Baron was started and aborted by King Sun. Yep, no teleport available from Khan here as well, but it is it. for the Afrika Freaks. Tucson, oh, very low. he's gonna make his way in. Yeah, is Peanut gonna get there? Nope. No, he's not. That's gonna be Spirit locking it down. Peanut will sacrifice himself. Derek's Gage, not enough of a shield and call the Forge God just for the follow-up. Prey's gonna get evaporated and BDD running for the hills. Cosmic Radiance ain't radiating much at the moment in Afrika. Trouble, but avoids a lot of the damage. The Demolish proc is going to be huge, but look at the damage out of the Afrika Freaks. They're tearing through these turrets. Khan just wants to get the minions away time. from it. BDD doing a decent job to do so. As the zombie Khan comes out, just trying to beat the heck out of this Scorpion. I think Afrika have done the it. Forge God. Yeah, the Nexus is exposed, and Afrika 
despite the rest of the game, come out victorious. You see the struggle of a 1-3-1 comp with low engage actually being able to close the game. They weren't able to do it. It looked good, but they made the decision at the end to contest the Baron Smite, and then two other members go down, and the game is decided. It undoes all the good work in the early game by Kingzone Dragon X. And it does feel like a bit of a pinching by Afrika Freaks. They are able to win game one. Yeah, absolutely loved the composition out of them, but it just didn't look like it was working throughout that entire game. To be honest, I mean, there was the couple of picks towards the end, which we have to admit was exactly what the comp was supposed to do. But it just felt like Kingzone were too far ahead. They were in too much control, had too much vision, and then Afrika just made the right calls. All those things were true, but it only matters if you can actually set up the base break, if you set up an inhibitor and use the 1-3-1. The difference from Scion to Gnar, which was the trade we had in this Rise comp, is that Gnar doesn't have, Scion doesn't have any options to go offensive in the side lane. He wasn't able to get any turret damage.